Hi guys and welcome to my review of yet another power supply, the KPS 3010D. As always I'd like to start with the user manual. I've already read the user manual and once again the English isn't great and sometimes it's quite difficult to understand what they mean and the user manual is not consistent between the Chinese language and the English language. There are some differences if you look closely. It looks like it has a lot more features than the previously reviewed linear power supplies like this Waco power supply. So I'm looking forward to that. Over voltage and over current protection, short circuit protection, automatic test function, custom four sets of storage for your presets, then key lock function, power cut to keep your memory. Next up is the description of the display and the power supply. What does what and what the display means then how to use it and how to use your different functions. So I've talked about that it's difficult to understand and that there are some inconsistencies, for example, for the timing output set function. In Chinese, the button is enter and in the English version, the button to use is save. So yeah, don't know which one to use, but I guess I'm gonna try it out later on and see which one is right. But there are a few of these inconsistencies in here where the Chinese version states obviously something different from the English version. Yeah, you have to watch out for that. So that's not great. It has a communication protocol because uh, some of these units come with a RS-232 interface, but this one doesn't. And yeah, that's about it for the manual. I did find a very funny sentence. It was funny to me because I work in these fields. Here it states PS300 series of products as a DC regulated power supply, dual four digit display, widely used in battery, LED lighting, toys, mobile phone, tablet PC repair, military, aerospace and other electronic engineering and other fields. But the thing I find hilarious is the military and aerospace and other electronic engineering and other fields. Yeah, no way. No way anybody working in the military or aerospace engineering would ever use this power supply. They wouldn't think of it. It's no freaking way. This would never happen. Engineers working in those fields look for other features other than the price. They are looking for reliability, for safety, for consistency of the products uh, and for traceability of the gear they're using. Because everything gets tested and calibrated on a regular basis and everything gets recorded. So you have your track record going down in time and using your gear so you know what happened when and how your gear drifted around or something like that. So nobody, nobody working in these fields would use this power supply. No way. Engineers who work in these fields have no problem spending like four to five figures on something like a power supply with a good brand name like a Rude and Schwarz or something like that. So this thing wouldn't even make it as a paperweight or a doorstop. They wouldn't tolerate this power supply on the premise because having it around just increases the chances of somebody actually using it and that's a risk nobody would want to take so they would just throw it out immediately. I'm sorry AVR but you definitely wouldn't cut it. That's about it for the user manual. Even though it's difficult to understand I do recommend reading it to everybody who's using this power supply because some of the functions look quite complicated to engage. I would also recommend keeping this manual around to look up how everything works. So don't throw it out just yet. Next up we have the mains wire. At first glance they look okay. The plug to the power supply itself looks decent. The strain relief does work. It's not too hard. So your cable doesn't get pinched. It's also in there properly. You can pull the cables out. Yeah, there are some small quality issues with the plug. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see for yourself. This is what I'm talking about. There's a small nose on the edge. There's a lip down in here. You can see it. This nose and there are some markings on the side so it looks like the mold for the overmolding is a bit worn and they just haven't replaced it yet but other than that this plug looks okay. It's also in there good and this works properly. Yeah, 
other than some minor cosmetic issues, it's okay. Let's take a look at the wire. HO3 VVF 3C times 0.75 square millimeters cross-sectional area. So that's more than enough for this power supply. You can load this cable with up to 6 amps, which would be like 1300 watts. And this power supply has a nominal output of just 300 watts. And if you calculate in like 50% losses, then you're still at like 600 watts. So this cable is more than enough for this application. Thumbs up. Next up are the load wires. And from previous experience, I really don't expect much from these. As you can see, they have once again these old school four spring banana plugs and with the screws protruding out. That's not great because they can touch each other and cause a short or blow a fuse or destroy your device. So yeah, let's see if you can actually use them. Let's try to plug them in. Okay. Okay, so they do actually work. But once again, yeah, this is just potential failure. If you throw something on your table out of metal and it touches the screws, then once again, you get a short and destroy a power supply or something else. So yeah, having the screws protrude out is really just stupid here. You should just throw these out. Yeah, they're ridiculous. So let's take a look at the other end, the alligator clips. They actually do work quite nice. They have an, a, a nice clamping force, so they will stay on your pins or on your device. Yeah, that's okay. But once again, they made a mistake soldering these. There is no strain relief. Soldering the copper wires makes them quite brittle. So it's only a, a matter of time until these break off. And it doesn't take all that much. You just have to wiggle them a bit and use them a few times. It's just a month or two. And then they will eventually break off. It doesn't take all that long. So yeah, let's see. Yeah, there we go. That's why you don't do that. So. Yeah, you have to redo them, both of them probably. Let's see, yeah, this one is exactly the same. Use it a few times and it's gone. So yeah. Hey, this is something interesting. The wire itself actually has a marking on it. These are PVC isolated, it's done in here. 2 times 0 0.5 square millimeters and up to 300 volts. So yeah, there are actually markings on this wire. So that's great. But what's not so great is the cross-sectional area of 0 0.5 square millimeters is actually not big enough for this application because this power supply puts out up to 10 amps. And for that, you would require at least one square millimeter of cross-sectional area. So exactly double that. And why that is, I can show you later on. This wire is really not sufficient for this application and you should use it max up to 5 amps. Anything above that, I would recommend using a different load wire. So these are definitely not adequate for this application and you have to throw them out and use something else. I'd like also to measure the actual cross-sectional area of these wires. So I got my calipers out and I've measured the diameter of the wire and it looks like to be 0.8 millimeters, which gives you a cross-sectional area of exactly uh, 0.5 square millimeters. And I do have to say these wires actually look quite good. This looks like actual copper, pure copper. It's very bright, quite ductile. So yeah, I do think these wires are actually quite decent. Too bad they are so thin, so you can't use it. This should have been at least a one square millimeter wire. But other than that, these wires are okay. Now to the power supply itself. It is a lot smaller than the linear power supplies and is also a lot lighter. It weighs approximately two kilograms, which is like less than half of what the other ones weigh. And if you compare it to the Waco, lengthwise it's about the same, a little bit longer about two centimeters. It is a bit higher 
also approximately two centimeters. But as you have seen, it's a lot narrower, like two thirds of the linear power supply. And this power supply was a bit more expensive than the other one. This one was 57 euros delivered to my dorm, while this linear Huaco power supply was 38 euros delivered to my door. So it's a bit more expensive, but while the linear power supplies only deliver 5 amps, this one can put out 10 amps, so it has double the power. It looks quite decent, I really like this design. It's quiet, it's simple. Let's take a closer look at the power supply. At the bottom you'll find it also has some foam rubber feet. It is actually quite hard. And because this power supply is so light, it actually slides a bit too easy for my taste. The rest of the casing is metal all the way around, back in here also. One thing I also noticed is that the screws are a lot smaller than the sunk holes in the casing. And it's all the way around like that. And some of the screws are also chowdered up right from the factory, like this one. I'm not sure if I'm able to get this one out, because it's nearly completely worn out right from the factory. So yeah, that's not great. I really don't like that the screws are so small. There is a real possibility that you pull this little screws through the metal cover, because they are so small, you can easily damage them. I don't know if that was really worth it to save these two cents, but they did it. I'm not really happy about that. Let's take a look at the back of the power supply. First we have up top a sticker with a serial number. I don't know if that's a unique one or they just stick the same number on every unit. But there's also the same sticker with the same serial number on the manual, so there's hope for that. But yeah, not much. We also have a fan in here, a small one, looks like a 60 millimeter fan. I really hope it's temperature regulated so it doesn't make noise all the time. We have also a sticker with a pinout of the remote control connector, but there was no pigtail in the package. We have also a mode selector switch for 220 and 110 volts. Uh, and we also have the mains connector and it looks like with a fuse. So let's pop the fuse out and see if there actually is a fuse in there. So yeah, there is a fuse in here, 5 amps and 250 volts. So they are using the right fuse because the mains cable is rated for a 6 amp and they're using a 5 amp fuse. Let's put it back in. They didn't write on the sticker which fuse to use, but that's okay, I guess. And there's also a quality control past sticker on in here. Yeah. Let's see about that. Let's take a look at the front. We have the display for voltage for amperage, indicators for your pre-selected voltage, A, B, C and D. We have also indicators for constant current, constant voltage, and if the output is engaged, and over temperature protection. We have also the buttons. Most of them are double function, so the outputs are switchable. So if you turn on the power supply, you can select your voltage and then press the on button, which enables the output. So that's a very good thing, and it's a feature the linear power supply slack. So that's great. The on-off switch feels also decent. I also hope they stick with the normal layout of decreasing value when you turn the knob counterclockwise and increasing values when you turn the knob clockwise. That's sometimes an issue with cheap gear. They don't take usability into account. Let's take a look at the banana posts. There are screw in. This is a close-up of the banana posts on this power supply. And at first glance, this looks like stainless steel, but stainless steel would be the completely wrong material for this application, because stainless steel has a really poor heat conductivity, like five times worse compared to brass and like 20 times worse compared to copper. And it also has poor electrical conductivity. Compared to brass, it's like 20 times worse and compared to copper, it's like 50 times worse. So there are significant disadvantages to using stainless steel in electrical applications. So. If this is actually stainless steel, that's really bad. 
There is also a possibility that this is just nickel plated copper and I really hope that it is. There is also a small burr on in here like with the other power supplies and if you take a closer look at the nuts there are over molded. You see here there is a plastic lip over the metal on this side. So yeah that's great they're using over molding for the nuts. They are quite nice. I'd like to see what thread that is. This is a normal M6 metric thread and if you look closer the thread pitch is identical. They're using just the normal M6 thread which is great compared to the other power supplies. I'd like to use the nut on this bolt and as you can see it slides on freely. So yeah, great job here. <laughs> if you lose one of these nuts don't worry your next hardware shop has plenty of replacement. I'm happy about that. Let's see about if this is just nickel plated brass or if this is actually stainless steel which would be bad. Get rid of this lip and see if this is actually brass or stainless steel. Uh oh it's actually stainless steel. Ah oh, come on. This is stupid. Just use brass. What's wrong with you? Yeah, it's stainless. Yeah, you might think that's great because of the corrosive properties, but it's really not. It has poor electrical conductivity and really bad heat conductivity. This is the, the material qualities you don't want in this application. You want good electrical conductivity and you want good heat conductivity. So the resistive losses get wicked out to your cable and to the power supply itself and not stay at this point. That's stupid. That's so stupid. Why would they use stainless? It's more expensive. It's difficult to work with. It's completely the wrong material for this application. I'm really disappointed. Well, let's see if the banana posts are also stainless. I have my drill bit to deburr it. Let's do the other one as well. As you can see this is finished a bit nicer than the other one. As you can see on the edge it is stainless. So yeah that's a fail. That's completely the wrong material for this application. The inside of the banana post looks quite smooth. It seems like they have been reamed, which is great for low electrical resistance, but it would have been even better if they would have used the right material. Another issue with using stainless in this application is that stainless can easily spot weld together. You have your stainless washers, you have your stainless posts, and if there is a high capacity behind these and you get a spark or like a dust spot. You can spot weld stainless quite easily. So yeah, that's another issue why you don't use stainless in this application. But they did. It's just a fail. I, I can't get over it. It's ridiculous. At this point I would like to plug in the power supply and turn it on. But handling it I noticed that there's something loose in this unit. I'm gonna put my mic closer to it so you can hear for yourself. So there is definitely something loose in here and I don't dare to turn it on because I don't know if that's something out of metal which can cause a short and destroy this power supply immediately. So before I turn it on I'm gonna take it apart and see what's inside. That's it for part one of this review. Next up is gonna be the teardown and if you have any questions or comments please leave them in the comment section below. If you liked this video please give me a thumbs up. If you would like to see more videos like this please subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching and see you another time. Bye!